Welcome to this uh, program with the title Man and Woman or Homosexuality or Lesbians. This is, uh, I think it's not a popular uh, topic, but uh, we will try to look into this and see what we can find, uh, if we can find a solution on this from the Bible. We will have a prayer before we start this program. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we trust in you. We trust in your word, the Bible, that you have inspired all that we can, that is written in this book. And uh, we know from the Bible that you have created all things. You have created man, the man and the woman. And uh, we pray that you through this program must show us how we shall live together on this earth after your plan. We pray for this in Jesus name. Amen. <coughs> So then the topic is how shall the marriage be? Shall it be man and woman? Shall it be homosexuals or lesbians? Or if we shall say it more correct, shall it be man and woman? Or shall it be man and man? Or shall it be woman and woman? That's the question. In Genesis chapter 6 verses 1 and 2 we read, Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all whom they choose. And that was the situation in the days of Noah. And we will soon see that this will, this will be the situation in the days just before Christ will come back again. And then we read a little about how the just, it was not so long time after the creation uh, and not so long time after Adam and Eve that this happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. We read from Genesis 19, chapter 19, verses 1 to 5. Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground, and he said, Hear now, my lords, Please turn it to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise early and go on your way. And they said, No, but we will spend the night in the open square. But he insisted strongly. So they turned in to him and entered his house. Then he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread and they ate. Now before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both old and young, all the people from every quarter surrounded the house. And they called to Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them all to us that we may know them. And this word know is from the Hebrew word Yoda, and that means, means sexual uh, connection. And in this case, it was homosexual connection. And we read that all the people, all the men of Sodom, both old, both old and young, all the people from every quarter, they surrounded the house of Lot. And it was, it was homosexuality. 
in this city. And it was so common that they all came together around the house of Lot and they wanted to have this man to take part in their sexual, um, um, uh, homosexual activity. Uh, and we know that because of this practice of homosexual activity, the whole city had to be burned down. And this shows us that God did, did not accept this uh, way of uh, homosexuality. And uh, it was only Lot and his two daughters that survived this uh, burning down of this city. And um, <clears throat> then we read in Jude, that is one of the last uh, uh, books in the New Testament, Jude, it is, has only one chapter, and we read from verse 7. As Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities around them in a, in a similar manner to these, <coughs> excuse me, having given themselves over to sex sexual immorality, homosexuality, and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So what happened there in Sodom, where all the cities were burned down because of this sexual immorality, this homosexual sexual, um, um, activity, the whole city was burned down and this is an example of how it will be in the last part of this world history. In Matthew 24 verse uh, um, 37 we read, But as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. For in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. So the people they thought in the days of Noah that they should live all the time, you know, the world will not stop. They should just continue, they married and they ate and they just continued their life. And we know how the situation were in the days of Sodoma and Gomorrah and in Noah. It was a great uh, immorality existed. And uh, uh, it was also homosexuality that was practiced. And we know that, as we have told, all the city was burned down. And the Bible in this text is, in Matthew 24, is saying that it will be like this in the last day of this world history. And um, in Matthew chapter 19 verse 4 we read, And he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female? And this is a very important text, because we have this text in Matthew chapter 19 but we have this also from the beginning in in genesis uh, chapter uh, 2 and 3 there we read that god made them male and female god created them like this that they should join together and be married and be a couple and it was god that has ordained it like this but today even priests, they accept lesbians and homosexuality. They even bless them as in a marriage. And this is not in harmony with the word of God. We have just read that God created them as male and female. And it should be like this also today. In Leviticus chapter 18 verse 22 we read, You shall not lay with a male as with a woman it is an abomination the bible is very clear on this it shall be a man and a woman they shall be a couple they shall they shall be married it is god 
that has directed it like this. He has joined, he will join them together. It shall not be a woman that shall be married to a woman or a man that shall be married to a man that is not in according to God's word. We have seen this very clear. In Romans chapter 1 uh, from verse 26 and some verses uh, more uh, we read for even they women exchange the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burn in their lust for one another. Men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of the error which was a due. So here we see that this is against the nature that women and women shall have this sexual activity or men and men. This is against the nature and if you look on yourself and the situation we know that it is God has created us uh, to male and female because it's only them that can have children. A man and a man cannot have children and a woman and a woman together cannot have children. And therefore we have to follow the guidelines of God what how he has created us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 we read or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. So this text is very clear. It says that neither fornicators, neither adulterers, homosexuals, sodomites, they will, if they continue to in this practice, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. If they shall inherit the kingdom of God, they must turn away from their wicked ways and follow the guidelines of that God has given us. And they also have to confess their sins and turn away from their wicked ways. In Genesis 2.24 and in Ephesians 5.31 we read, Therefore the man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. So God has directed it like this. It is God that has joined man and woman together in a marriage. And uh, in Exodus uh, chapter 20, in the Ten Commandments, we read in verse 14, you shall not commit adultery. And adultery that is sex outside the marriage. And then we read about the men of Israel, they had married some women that worshipped other gods. During a feast for their gods, the men of Israel started to leave sexual, to have sexual activity more or less openly with the daughters of Moab. And then in Numbers 25 we read more about this. And indeed one of the children of Israel came and presented to his brethren a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel, who were weeping at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Now when Peneas, the son of Elias, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand, and he went after the man of Israel into the tent and trust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman threw her body. So the plague was stopped among the children of Israel. And those who died in the plague were 24,000. So here we see that this 
God reacted really hard against this. That they took a wife, a woman, that not had the same faith. And they took the wife they wanted to, just wanted to have. And they have sexual activity with them. And it was 24,000 that died in this plague. Because this was the wrath, wrath of God that was shown here. And when this uh, penis took this jewelry and put it through this person so they died, then the plague ended. So God does not accept uh, this way of, uh, of sexual activity where just take a wife. And especially a wife from another faith. But even though if you just take a wife and have sexual activity with them, it's not in according to the word of God. God has created us as man and woman. And they shall be one flesh. It shall not be different women. Or many women. Women. But it shall be man and woman. And they shall be one flesh. And God has blessed this. And in Matthew 19, 19, 19, we read, And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except it be for fornication, except for sexual immorality, then marries and marries another, commit adultery. And whoever marries her who is divorced, commits adultery. So God has created us like men and women to join together in a marriage and it shall last for as long as the people are living. But if you break the covenant, if you, if you um, um, are going, if a wife in, a, in this marriage for example is going to another man and they have a sexual um, activity, then the man that is left that not has accepted this, he can decide if this wife can come back to him or not. And if he not will accept what the wife, his wife has done with this uh, uh, sexual immorality with another man, then he can divorce. So this is exception. Uh, it is, we read in the text, except it be for fornication. Well, this is something to think about and uh, to live together without being married and go from one person to another is not accepted in the Bible. In, uh, in the Bible, this is fornication. And we have an example of this when uh, Christ met this uh, woman uh, by the well, uh, this woman from Samaria, and uh, uh, she understood that Jesus was the Savior. And then uh, after this, uh, Christ said to her uh, that, um, go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. In that you spoke truly. So this lady had had five husbands, but the man she lived together with now was not her husband. So they lived together, but Christ did not accept this activity. And then in Exodus 20, chapter 20, verse 17, we read, You shall not covered your neighbor's wife. It is so many people that covered their neighbor's wife today. They take the wife from their neighbors and will have them as their sexual partner. This is not right according to the Bible. This is sin. And in Matthew 19 verses 4 to 6 we read, And he answered and said to them, have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female? Therefore, the man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So then, they are no longer two, 
but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. And it's a sad thing to say that even bishops and priests today, they marry man and man and woman and woman, lesbians and homosexuals. But the Bible is saying that God only accepts what He has ordained, and that is a man and a woman together. It is God has ordained this. God accepts this marriage. He does not accept what the bishops and the priests are doing today. They are not God's representatives when they marry a man and a man or a woman and a woman. In Matthew 19, 17 we read, But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. And we have read in the Ten Commandments that you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not make adultery and so on. And in Deut Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 and 2 we read, Now it came to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all His commandments which I commanded you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth, then all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. And then in verse 15 we read, But it shall come to pass, if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all His commandments and His statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. So here we have to take a choice, each one of us, if we will obey God's commandments or not. If we obey His commandments, if we love Christ, then we will keep His commandments and then the blessings will come. But if we not will obey the commandments of God, God and go our own ways, then the curses will come upon you and overtake you. That's the word of the God or from the Bible. In Matthew 3 verse 2 we read, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And here we have this repenting message that John gave, that Christ gave, that the disciples gave, and we have to give today. Because if you have gone astray and gone against God's will, you can always come back to God. He's always, he's always there to, to meet you. And to accept you as his son and daughters if you confess your sins and come back to Christ. He will forgive you. We read in 1 John 1 9 if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we have to come to Christ to confess our sins. And if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, so He will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Christ is like this. He is always open to accept us when we come to Him with our sin. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own lust. Then when the lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. So here 
James just tells us how, how we can sin. Because we are tempted, all it, it, it is not sin to be tempted. But if we give after for temptation and make this sin, uh, this text tells us that, uh, that we, is, we are drawn away by our lust. If we are giving after for the lust, for the flesh, then we sin. But if we if we, when we are tempted, we pray to God for help, so we can receive His power, so we not can fall in temptations, then He will help us, so we can come out of this temptation and uh, be free in Christ. In Galatians uh, chapter 5, verse 16 to 21, we read, I say, them walk in I say to them walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law no the works of the flesh are evident which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lordness, idol idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousies, outburst of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Here we have it again, that we, um, we are in a battle, we are in a spiritual battle, we either we will follow the flesh, or we will follow, follow the Spirit. And we have to really to pray to God that He must help us not to follow the flesh, but to follow the Spirit. For we read that the adultery, the fornication, and all this uncleanness, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. So may God help you and me to seek God first, so we receive His power in our lives to resist temptations, so we can go God's way. John the Baptist, he told the leaders of Israel, not only that they should confess their sins, but he said, therefore bear fruit worthy of repentance. It must come some good fruits, the fruits of the spirits must come out of our lives, so we can, so the people can see that it has been a change in our life, that God has come into our life and given us power to live a life to His glory. In Ephesians chapter five verse nine we read, "For the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth." finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And in Galatians chapter 5, verse 25, 22 to 25, read a lo little more about the fruit of the Spirit. We read, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desire. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. So it, it is just 
not enough only to accept Christ as your Savior. Yes, that's the first step. That we have seen what Christ has done for us. And we accept his salvation in faith. But here when the, and then we are promised the Holy Spirit that will come into our life. And give us power to resist temptation. And this text tells us that we shall live in the Spirit. And we shall walk in the Spirit. We shall continue to walk with Christ. In Corinthians, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 we read, No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So this is a fantastic promise that God will give us his help, all the help we need to resist temptations so we can be overcome temptations. All the temptations because the power of God is stronger than the power of Satan and when the power of God the Holy Spirit is in our life then we have the strongest power and we can overcome every temptations from the devil in John 15 4 we read Jesus said abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So we have to abide in Christ. We have to receive his power just as the branches receive pro power from the, from the, uh, or oh, what is the stem. We have to receive power from. Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 to 5 we read, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God. For pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So we have to bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So we war do we do not war um, according to the flesh, but in God we are mighty to win over all temptations. First Corinthians Chapter 6, verse 11, we read, And such were some of you. Once you were like this. But now were washed. But you, but you were washed. But you were sanctified. But you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So this tenth text tells us that it, it, it will be a change in our life when we confess our sins and we receive God's mercy in our life, His power. Then when, if we have, if we have uh, done something wrong, we will stop to do these wrong things. But now you were washed, but now you were sanctified. But now you were justified. And now you have received the power of God to resist these temptations. And we have to understand that we are nothing in ourselves. We have to empty our hearts so the Holy Spirit can come into our heart and our life. So we can receive this power against Satan's temptations. In Romans chapter 8. Verses 5 to 9 we read, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to be carnal minded is death. 
but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. No, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. So it is so important to know that you have laid all your sin on Christ. You have decided to follow him. Because then the Holy Spirit will work in you, and you are His brother and sister. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. And I hope that this can, that you can experience this. We have to experience this, all of this. We have to, ins to experience this power of the Holy Spirit in our lives so we can resist Satan's temptations. In Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 we read, But the fearful, unbelieving, abominable, murderous, sexual, immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And then we have a very encouraging word from Isaiah chapter 51, verse 1 and 2. Awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion, put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the old city, for the, earth, for the uncircumcised and the unclean shall not longer come to you. Shake yourself from the dust, arise, sit on, O Jerusalem. Lose yourself from the bones of your neck, O captive daughters of Zion. If you feel that you are captive under Satan, then you have to listen to this word, that Christ will lose the bones so you can be free in him. And this is just the mission of Christ as we read it in Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, Christ is saying, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. And it is so many people that are oppressed today. They are in captivity and they are in sin. And it is only if, when we acknowledge and understand our situation and we are coming to Christ and He will free us from all the bonds. He will free us from this captivity so we can be free in Him. And then we must remember that Christ is looking down to us. He can see all what we are doing. And if we try to hide something from Him, what we are doing against God's will, then He will remind us of this by the Holy Spirit. But if we not listen to the Holy Spirit, then we will be reminded of this in the day of judgment. And we have to preach today that for the hour of His judgment is come. So the day the judgment is in heaven. It's Christ that is a judge and they will go through all the books. And we read in 2 Corinthians 5.10 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. So we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. If you think that you can hide your sin from Christ, you, this will be a failure, a great failure. Because Christ is seeing all what you are doing, what I am doing. And he will judge after 
our acts, how we are living. But if we confess our sins and come to Christ, then He will be our judge. He will take our sins on Him so we can be free in Him. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of your youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thy eyes. But know, lo, that for all these things, God will bring thee into the judgment. So God has created us with a free will. We can just take and do what we want to do. We can think what we want to th think. We can focus on what we want to focus. But this text reminds us that all will come before the judgment. So we will be judged after what we are doing. It's only sh our only chance is to is to um, is to acknowledge, to confess our sins. So our sins we can lay our sins on Christ, so we can be free in Him in this judgment. Because the Bible is saying in First John three four that. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So if we transgress the law of God, you can yourself read the law of God, these ten simple rules that Christ has given to us. And this is in, uh, in uh, uh, Exodus chapter 20, verses 3 to 17. So if we break God's law, then we are sinners. And we can only be free in the judgment if we confess our sins. So we can be free in Christ. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So our only chance is to come to Christ and accept what he has done for us. He has given all his life for us. He has done all for us so we shall have eternal life. Why should not we show to Christ, give feedback to him, that we are really glad for what he has done for us. And that we we, he has also promised us to give us the Holy Spirit, a power that will help us to resist sin. So we can be ready to go with him when he is coming soon back again to take his faithful one to heaven. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He gave His only Son. He gave all for you and me. Why should not we accept this gift? May God help you and me to accept this gift. And uh, then we soon will end this program with this um, uh, situation. When the priest they came with a, a lady that had been uh, taken uh, caught in adultery in the very act. And according to the law of Moses they had to stone this lady. But then uh, Christ uh, he said to them that who he who is without sin among you let him throw a stone at her first. And they had, they, you can imagine, they had uh, yeah, perhaps already taken the stone in their hands. And then Christ, he bowed down and wrote on the ground. And perhaps he wrote some of the sins of this priest. Because uh, soon they left him and this place, one after another. And at least Christ, he raised up and uh, he uh, said... Um, uh, 
Has no one condemned you? Christ said to this lady. And she said, No one, Lord. And Jesus answered to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. And this is, this is also the conclusion we will take on this program. We will not neither condemn any people, if they are homosexuals or lesbians. Because we have just pointed out what the Bible is saying about how God has created us and the guidance He has given us so we shall follow. So we just want to lift up forward this guidelines for us so we know what is truth and what God has given us, the guidelines He has given us that we should follow after His footsteps. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we all are have sinned. But we can, if we confess our sins, He will come near to us. He will, he will, he will forgive us. And, uh, and we can be free in Christ. So in John 6, 37, Christ is saying, And him who comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. That's very good. If you think that you feel yourself condemned, just look on Jesus. Just look on this promise he has given here in this text. That him who comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Then it is up to you and me to come to Christ, to look to him, what he has done for you. And he, if you confess your sins, and decide to follow Christ's guidelines, then He will forgive you and you can start a new life in Him. May God help you and me to follow His guidelines in His work. Let us end with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we have seen all this Bible text and how you have created us you have created us to, as man and woman to be together in a marriage. And we pray that you must help us to follow this. So we can help to build up the society. So it can be as good as possible. And we know that to follow your law and to follow your guidelines, that is the best for all of us. And we pray for everyone that have listened to this program. That they must decide in their heart to follow you all the way. We pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen.